Hi, this is Randall from Bettendorf, Iowa. My fantasy team is Pettis, Pickle, Onion, and Tomato, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, what's going on? Pettis, pickle, onion, and tomato, huh? That's how I order my burger. Sands the tomato, because the only way to eat a tomato is throwing it straight in the garbage. That's just throwing a tomato away. That's not actually eating a tomato. That's where I come in. (laughs) I grab that (laughs) tomato out of the garbage, and I go to town. Go to, Go to town. town. I call those garbage tomatoes. Yeah, no, I get it. I understand why. Welcome into the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back again. Great show for you today. Fantasy wild cards. Wild, wild cards God. on the show today. Difficult to rank players. They could end up in a lot of different places, Mike. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? I absolutely do. That's why I picked one who's ranked highly, mm. but he could finish low. Oh. And I picked one who's ranked low lowly but it could finish high mm. wow God. in other words you could uh you know they start off looking like a tomato in the garbage could end up uh being a tomato in the belly <laughs> <laughs> they start as a tomato in the garbage they end up as a garbage tomato yeah as jason would yeah. call them apparently for you to eat it it would have to become another fruit out yes. of the garbage yes you're not a big tomato fan. No. You overtly and aggressively pick them off of things that they come on. Well, the problem with them is throwing them is they ruin everything they touch. <laughs> is there no scenario where salsa? No, the tomatoes can be used in other ways. Like ketchup is great. Okay, but salsa is great, but tomato that, by its by as a standalone product is but absolute no, trash. no grape tomatoes. No. Oh no. Oh no 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 but no. But you can't no. make the ketchup like salsa has chunks of tomatoes by themselves. In oh, it. I I totally get that. But it's Do like you have pasta sauce that has the chunks? Sure. Like pizza. You don't mind it. No, no, no. Okay. Well, I mean it's like relish. Relish is ap- like relish and tomatoes both belong in the garbage, but I love my Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm a little less picky. I don't or I don't like the big gooey Tomatoes that can end up on your cheap cheeseburger, but I if you give me some finely diced like tomatoes a on a taco, that's good. You have a different take. All right, hey, quick question of the day, guys, from Twitter: Which off-season acquisition will end up being the most overhyped? This was, was this was funny to me because I don't think that there are almost any I agree off-season acquisitions that are hyped. I like, I wanted to say that. Randall Cobb, but who's hyping Randall Cobb to Dallas? I agree with that, and I also disagree with you skipping the name of the kind patron who asked us this question. Wow, I thought it said cold hands, warm feet. No, it didn't. So the Twitter patron, this is their name, is cold hands, warm farts? That's correct. Mm. Okay. And I know that you would not stand for me omitting Thank you. Uh, anything toilet I would, related. I, but I'm totally with you that there's, there's no super... Well, I guess there's one, and he's ob- he's my overhyped guy, and that's yeah. Le'Veon Bell. Because other than that, there's not like Vincent Jackson going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers free of the shackles of the Chargers. What can he become with this new team? There, uh, that's like, a throwback. That's yeah. That, we really okay. So there's no Alshon Jeffrey. There you go. Going from the Chicago Bears, free of the shackles of the Bears, and now he's with the Eagles. Because all almost all of the players who were somewhat fantasy relevant you're talking these are lower tier guys like cole beasley and adam humphreys where not these, not hyped up for alfred blue thank i guess you. we you could you know what i'm gonna change mine okay i was gonna say nick Foles because i don't think it's gonna change a lot in jacksonville for the offense with nick Foles. I, but again I just, not hyped not for fantasy. Not real. Not him. I, not individually. I his, think Jacksonville people are very hyped for Nick Foles. Though. Well, and pe- fans of Jacksonville's other fantasy players are hyped for Nick Foles, and sure. I'm not. But I'll say Kareem Hunt. Okay. Because that, yeah, I'll allow it. Because Kareem Hunt is very hyped. Very people are excited for Kareem Hunt. They want to find the secret value of Kareem Hunt, and I think on this show we've been very. Demonstrative in the fact that look, you he's, cannot he's not, draft cream. That, uh, that's what I was you say. cannot draft. Foot Clan, 
if you're in a redraft league, you cannot draft Kareem Hunt. They have a, a, a an earlier bye week. He's suspended eight weeks, so that's nine. You're going to have to hold a player till week ten. That's your your you already know if you're playoff bound or not by that point, and you've hampered your team and your bench ability to make no. I mean, look, I had two names written down. One of them was Kareem Hunt. So who's I, your other name? My other name is Jared Cook. I think that Jared Cook okay, is getting... I'll allow it, because I'm hyped for Jared Cook. Me too. A lot Tell of people are, and I am not one of them. I I think that you're going to have more Benjamin, Benjamin Watson, less Jimmy Graham. And, you know, you always want to have the... Are you forgetting how awesome Benjamin Watson was once he broke out for that team? Benjamin Watson had one good season, but not every season was good. When he came back, he w was nothing. So, that was the question. Who, you know... Who's going to end up being the most overhyped? I think Cook is is definitely hyped. A lot so of people if, are yeah. really, really excited about Jared Cook based on what he did last year. My whole argument is what he did last year was based on being the only guy in town, and there are plenty of other viable targets. And when you take the target numbers from for Jared Cook, who has not been a great player his career, and you say, hey, you're not the number one or the number two or probably not even the number three. He could be the – Two? No, Alvin Kamara and so you Michael Thomas. Okay, they will be the one and two. All right, I I have him at seven. Is that too high, Mike or uh, Jason? Uh, yeah. I mean, the the reality is finishing at number seven at tight end is going to stink. I'm trying. Trey to, Burton finished at number seven last year at tight end. It doesn't. I'm matter. trying to recall who was the best quarterback. Well, I guess didn't Jared Cook? Jared Cook had a year with Green Bay. Didn't Jared Cook have a year with Nick Foles in Los Angeles too? I mean, he yeah, he was on Tennessee for a long time. I think it's, a, it's Saint, certainly he, a they fair were, answer. They were St. Louis at the time. But. Certainly a fair answer, no doubt. Um, okay, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to stay current with the show. You can follow Jason if you oh. just if you're more interested in Jared Cook hate at Jason FFL. You can read unlimited supplies. It's such a good follow I, I recommend it yourself you recommend jason ffl yes uh at jason ffl mike is at ff hitman i'm at andy holloway um we have something very exciting to Super cool. announce now this is the only time we're even mentioning this is that right brooks one time oh yeah so we have a very special live tour contest at footclangiveaway.com we are teaming up with friends of the show, Pristine Auction, and we are hooking up one lucky winner in each city of our upcoming tour, okay? And uh, not only is this your chance to win a pair of our sold-out St. Jude VIP meet-and-greet tickets, but we're featuring an extremely special giveaway in each city where you can win a signed Super cool. player helmet, we have these here now on site. We did it last year. You want to see how awesome it is? Just check out the YouTube yeah. of these people getting signed helmets. So you go to footclangiveaway.com right now. You get a chance to win. If and, you're, yeah, go for it. Yeah, if you're in Chicago, Mitchell Trubisky helmet, which it's unbelievable. It's, chrom it's chromed out. I saw Mike uh, trimming his beard hair uh, looking at the reflection. I am a little bit upset that you brought it up because – <laughs> I have going to possess. I it. had some big plans for a an Indiana Jones <laughs> switcheroo <laughs> with that yeah. helmet. Yeah, in New York City, signed Saquon Barkley. In San Francisco, we got a Jimmy Garoppolo signed helmet. Jared Goff Jared? signed helmet in Los Angeles, and a David Johnson signed helmet in Phoenix. And th this is this is like now or never. We're giving this away in a couple days. Our next show on Tuesday, we're going to announce. The winners. This is this is fantastic, and uh, well, you got to come to the show. Yeah, that's a big part of this. Well, get you're gonna the winners are gonna get VIP meet and greet tickets and the autographed helmet. And uh, in years past, we made a big deal of that winner at these shows. Yes. If you head to FootClanGiveaway.com, you can enter for your chance to win. Lots of different ways to enter. The winner will be chosen and notified very very soon. Speaking of very very soon, yeah, Chicago. Yeah, we are we are there in like two and a half weeks. Yes, 
We're going to be at the Thalia Hall. Yes, get your Tony Kukos <laughs> jerseys out. That We're kicking this Bust season off. Bust them out. Awesome. <laughs> a Tony Kukoc get your, reference? Get your Kukoc jerseys ready to rumble. <laughs> Grab your BG Armstrong jersey. That's what they're known for. The home of Tony Kukoc. I only know BJ Armstrong because he was on NBA Jam instead yeah, of Jordan. S- <laughs> Bill me. Cartwright. Those references. <laughs> we are killing the demo. They make me smile. FootClanGiveaway.com. All right. We don't have a bunch of news, but we do have some news. I want to jump in here real quick. The old sleeper uh, alert went off, and the Patriots released yep. tight end Austin Safarian Jenkins. Okay, well. I think, yeah, the guy's got some personal issues he's trying to deal with. Uh, this so is, young still. It's been a career situation for him. I'm very unfortunate for for him to have to deal with all of this And And so you stuff. go from Rob Gronkowski to, okay, maybe Austin Safarian Jenkins. There was a time when it was maybe going to be Jared Cook. Cook goes to New Orleans. And then Benjamin Watson's there. And then Benjamin Watson gets suspended for four games. No, and – I mean, with between Jared Cook and Adam Humphreys spurning the Super Bowl winning Patriots, what's going on there? I, you know, Tom Mo- Brady. They he's, don't pay he's as the old, much. He's the old goat. No, they don't pay as much. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Yeah. So week one, you're looking at somebody like Matt Lacoste potentially being the starter for fantasy week one. You're looking at non Patriots as your starter. Yeah. 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 So that's uh, that's the gist. Let's go ahead and jump into the main event. No, I'm saying, no, the brakes. Guys, why are the brakes working? Because I cut the brakes. Wild card. Yeah. Wild card. You, you were really into that oh, yeah. drop. That's, That's uh, Always Sunny, is that right? That is that, correct. And I, never, is, I never went through Always Sunny. That, you missed out because I've heard that. there were some years of, of greatness from that show. But then on top of that, a full-on musical reference to things that are wild. Uh, guys, I can't tell you how pleased I am with that drop. With yourself. <laughs> yes. I hadn't heard it in a long time. Yeah. So, so far, the takeaways from this show – Jason believes he's a great follow on Twitter. Well, yeah. Mike yeah. is very uh, he's a big fan of his own drops yeah. for the show. Yeah. So I'll, what I'll, do you I'll love figure about out what I love about myself <laughs> soon. Um, how about my fantasy wild cards, Here guys? We go. So these are players that are very difficult to rank. I'm excited to hear your thoughts on these players. For me, I'm going to kick it off with Darius Geis, running back. There's a question mark at the end of it. Running back for the Washington Redskins. The Redskins brought back Adrian Peterson after a highly productive year. How productive was Adrian Peterson's year? Here's how productive. It was so productive that we had somebody write in to our our customer support line believing that the consistency chart data that we had was wrong because Adrian Peterson was so high. Did you see that? No. He was so productive in Washington. Chris Thompson, always injured, always uh, limited, dynamic when he's out there. But Darius Geis, look, he tore his ACL, his left knee, during the first preseason game last year. Mike had been texting me highlights of him right before it happened. Yeah, that that sucked. And he uh, he underwent reconstructive surgery. Then an infection forced him to have three additional procedures to drain fluid from the knee. It delayed his rehab. Now he's back to doing agility drills, but all reports say he's nowhere close to 100%. And our our injury expert from the Ultimate Draft Kit, he says, look, you can't take the infection lightly because it delayed the rehab and recovery. Um, I don't believe you're going to get a workhorse with Darius Geis, but that doesn't mean... He's not a fantasy wild card because the potential for Darius Geis is three down potential, right, Mike? Yes, it absolutely is. I mean, he's not his his production profile coming out of college was not that of a monster pass catcher, but you have to take into account where he came from of LSU. The same thing happened with Leonard Fournette. Darius Geis was an incredible talent coming into the running back position in an absolute juicy spot. Uh, at Washington, where you I mean, you saw what Adrian Peterson did with his old decrepit body, and 
I'm with you, Andy, that what Darius Geis could be is a top 20 running back. I'm not going to put Darius Geis, say the ceiling is a top 10 guy, but he could easily be a top 20 guy if he, if he were healthy and, and getting the actual workload. But with them bringing back Adrian Peterson, they drafted Bryce Love, who has, he's dealing with his own injury, but they spent a fourth rounder yes. on an injured running back, almost just a, a cue card telling the fantasy industry that Geis is not. 100%. We're very concerned about Darius Geis, not just for this year, but for the for the future of this franchise. And at a minimum, you could be looking at a situation where, look, I don't know if the second half of the year for Darius Geis is all of a sudden fantasy superstardom right. for your team because the cost, I mean, I have him ranked at 40, uh, but his average draft position is in the fifth round right yeah, now. Yeah, he's currently, according to Fantasy Football Calculator, the RB26. That's yeah. too high. It, that's too high for you to take the chance that – That he's what, a top 20 back? Like, yeah. The, the chance to me is, okay, he, he is the guy – He's not going to get the receptions, but he's going to be the man on the ground. He's going to be very good, and maybe he's the running back fifteen. So, like, I'm, that would be great value. It would be okay value, but I I don't feel like I mean that's that's like I believe ceiling. I think if he if he takes the role and was is okay with it, he's in the twenties. He's where he's being drafted. So like, think, and, but the risk on the other side is he's worthless. Sure, I think the fifth round is too high for me to want to be a part of the wild card experience here with Darius guys. And it hurts me because in the beginning of the off season, I actually acquired him in a dynasty league. Now I've since moved on, but I did it because I, I, you know, I believed he was further along in the recovery and ahead of the Adrian Peterson resigning and things like that. I think there's a great future for Darius guys. I'm not sure it's this year. He certainly is a wild card. I believe that his draft place like where he's drafted will range uh wildly uh, among different leagues it's just what you believe about him right um it's hard to find a guy that could be a three down skill set on a team that wants to give somebody that responsibility but there's too many variables with peterson and thompson and bryce love and the injury i think that the draft price is is okay i mean that there are players behind him like david montgomery but montgomery and his mop opportunity are going to come in and they're going to, he'll be higher than Darius guys come actual draft season in August. But I think it, in fact, it's fair. It's a fair f factoring in what he could be with the injury instead of people just completely discounting him and throwing him away. Okay. So fantasy wild card, uh, we turn into Jason Moore here. Yeah. So my wild card is a guy who has been hyped and has failed from fantasy from a fantasy perspective year after year after year he gets more hype than he performs with and that's Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins is a guy that is a complete wild card this year because of two reasons. One is obviously the Tyreek Hill Pat Mahomes situation, right? right. Like he's on one of the best offenses and in the Hill, league as we current sorry to cut you off, Jay, but no. as we know Tyreek Hill that are still the only update we've received recently was, was that the NFL is aware and they're monitoring the situation. Well, and further than that, they want that situation to finish playing out before they make their decision. So who knows how so long there's a, that will there's last. There's a possibility that week one, Tyreek Hill is there on the team unless the Kansas City Chiefs make a decision otherwise. Right, so that's already part of the wild card, right? right. It's like, as of right now, my belief, I assume, right or wrong – that Tyree Kill is not going to be part of the Kansas City Chiefs in 2019. I don't think he plays a game in 2019, which gives great opportunity to Sammy Watkins, who most people don't want to touch. And why don't they want to touch him? Because every single year he has been overdrafted for the most part. Right. If you look back to and, – and I want to, I want to have your guys' ears, right? Because I know you know who Sammy Watkins is. You have your opinions on Sammy Watkins and what's happened in his career. Andy, you recently have Fatigue, talked about how doubt, those type of things. Yeah, yeah. You, you you have you have recently talked about how he's just done. He he doesn't there's no chance Andy is he can full be full shark tank right now on Sammy Watkins. Well, I, I think I'm more done with Sammy than Sammy may be done. I believe I said he doesn't have the ceiling he once had. Yes. So I want to walk you through his career real quick. 
2014, if you go back and look at pre-draft rankings, he was the cream of the crop. He was the bell of the ball, and this was a year. What year was that again? 2014. Got it. it, it I'm it, trying to remember. Well, it's an important distinction because it was the year that Odell Beckham was there. It was the year that Mike Evans was there. Kelvin Benjamin. Uh, there were a lot of great players that came out that season, and he was a cut above to the point where, I don't know if you remember this, Buffalo Bills sitting on the clock, number nine in the draft. They need a wide receiver. They trade a future first and fourth to go up five spots and grab Sammy Watkins at the five. I mean, he his talent was just so sure of hitting that they were willing to take that that step. And then look at how his career went. First year, great for a rookie wide receiver. 982 yards, six touchdowns. He was like, okay, he's he's going to be something special. Sophomore year comes out. He's the number one on the team. He's facing the best defenders. Over 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns. What he showed is that, oh, yeah, he is going to be a special wide receiver, except he did that in only 13 games because he got injured. That's when everything started falling apart. Missing games, uh, foot injuries, uh, you know, all sorts of problems. Then he gets traded to the Los Angeles Rams. Do you remember when he was traded? Preseason. Late preseason. Right. Like, right, like the season starts manana. He was actually traded right after we had recorded an episode of the podcast because he was a jerk. Right. right. It was. And we uh, couldn't talk yeah. about it. The point is, he was not able to get in, plugged into that system. He had very few targets. Nine out of the first ten games, he didn't have, uh, I, I think, five targets. Still ended up with... A great touchdown count on the season. <clears throat> then he comes to the last year, new system again in Kansas City. I just, why do you care so much? Here's why I care. I, Michael Floyd was the top 10 pick. He's out of the league. Michael Floyd never showed that he had anything on the sure field. Sure he did. Yes, he had more I total yardage had, than, than Sammy's had in more years. A, on a per game basis, Sammy Watkins oh. has shown that he is elite. I feel like you have a gun to your head from Sammy Watkins' family Floyd right now. Floyd had a thousand yard season. Yeah. Uh, great. He had a thousand yard season. But if you look on a per game basis, he doesn't touch Sammy Watkins. Even this last year where everybody hates Sammy Watkins and they think he had a bad year, he was actually – he had a 20% market share. You keep in mind that two of the games that show up on his box score when you look at how many games he played, he was in 10% of those snaps. He, you know, he, he tried to come back in week 11 from the foot and then quickly was out of the game. Like, he didn't play. Nobody played him in that fantasy week. Look, injuries are real. And, and if he gets injured, he's going to be an absolute bust as a wild card. But when he was playing for Pat Mahomes with Tyreek Hill last year, this really good wide receiver, in my opinion, had 20% market share and was basically a top 15 wide receiver with Tyreek Hill there. If he comes and plays 16 games this year and Tyreek Hill's out, what's his ceiling with Pat Mahomes? What is what is? It's like, not as high as you think it is. Because, I think it's top five. Because good – oh, that's insane. Good receivers don't need – like speeches to tell you why they couldn't be good over and over and over and over. A new system, it was a late trade. He's got to be in St. Los Angeles. Otherwise, he'd be good. New system last year. He finished 63rd in fantasy because he was hurt. New system. I, I don't, I think it's just excuses that don't need to be made. My point is, he will have big games. I said, I've said that all offseason. I'm worried. The wild card for me is that. He does not have that ceiling anymore. They will distribute the ball elsewhere. They will not let him be a top five guy because he can't be a top five guy. That ship sailed long ago. Because he's 26? He's 24. No. What? Well, that's what no, he's not 24 anymore. I think he's like 25. <laughs> that's, what your, that's what your consistency charts tell I me. I think he's 25 in like 300 and something days. So yes, he's, he's, 20, he's 25. Uh, he'll be 26 in a week. But... Uh, I just think that we've seen so many career arcs. Some there's so many top ten players that don't become nothing. I, I, I the point. Why is he going to become something? Is because it because of Patrick Mahomes? No, it's because he's he's, he's not shown, good. No, no, no. See, that's what I do. He's yeah, not, that's where he's I not get upset. Good enough. No, he's that's, not good enough. That's where I get upset because we've seen top ten guys that just bust. They're not good. If you're that, good that's enough, over and over what? and over. 
if you're good enough, don't you make your mark on Sean McVay's offense with to the tune of more than 39 receptions? I think you're good enough to go and have the Kansas City Chiefs say, hey, you want $48 million? Yeah, that's, that was exactly the point I was going to go to. A guy who's on his third chance or whatever in the league, they don't receive $48 million for they three years. They know he's a great wide receiver. The, the guys who bust out, like Brashad Perryman, Kevin White, they're not strolling into a $50 million deal. They're getting one-year deals for nothing. That's because they all received Jason's pamphlets. <laughs> He's just, been mailing this just stuff out. That, look, that the, the NFL, Andy Reid It's Reed hard to and say company, if, he plays, if he plays 16, he'll have a very productive season. Not a top-five season. He also never plays 16. Right. Well, so, not I'm, since his I'm definitely in the middle season. of you guys. I wouldn't say his – ceiling is top five but it his ceiling to me is he's a top 15 Bro brooks guy. where do we have uh do we have that in there so jason has him at 17 i'm at 26 i'm not burying his soul i just don't think his ceiling's what you think it is you just said top five you ceiling, think sammy not, Watkins ceiling is top five now i yeah, think that that is impossible if if he plays 16 i think he's locked for a top 15 wide receiver but okay. his ceiling if he really balls out i think is a top five guy because in order to be top five, usually you need a lot of touchdowns. And if I need a lot of touchdowns, I want Aaron Rodgers. I love touchdowns. I want, I want Pat Mahomes. I want Peyton Manning. Like I, they give more touchdowns. They're very generous. They, they are with their touchdowns. giving, especially charitable, benevolent. Mike, I'm not even going to let you talk because I'm just going to pick. Weird. I'm just going to piggyback his and get mine out of the way, and then you guys will have yours because mine's me, Cole Hardman. So I, okay. I need to have the continuing conversation of just saying as maybe I just group all the wide receivers in Kansas City into the wild card category. Wild card! <laughs> wild card! Because Sammy Watkins, Mecole Hardman, Demarcus Robinson, heck, Byron Pringle. All those guys. Oh, stop. Stop hey. with the Byron Pringle. Byron Pringle McCringleberry. Stop. It would make I, – I know that a player with that name it would help the show. That's all I'm well, saying. Well, yes. That's it's true. not that I'm not rooting for him. It's <laughs> <laughs> My point is simply that there is uh, there's a lot of wild cards did in he, Kansas did he City. Pop? The uh, Pringle? Yeah. Is that was that an old tagline for? No, well, because if you pop, then you can't stop. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, you got yes. It. What's my score on I'm, that one? I'm writing it I down. Need, <laughs> I need an official score. Yeah. Oh, an eight. I got you to break. Yeah, I know it was an eight because it was a bad joke. The, the <laughs> fact that you got him to break is what put it up to an eight. I knew I, I knew there must have been a commercial Oof. I missed. That's why I asked, but he got me for sure. Uh, look, I, I like what most fantasy players like, which is unknown. The unknown of Miko Hardman is so much more attractive to me than the known of Sammy Watkins. Not that he's going to be a better like more consistent player, but the unknown, the unknown of this guy that they traded up and invested in. And if Tyreek's not there and he was the fastest guy at the combine and he's a big play player with, uh, you know, Pat Mahomes, that's exciting. Yes. But the truth of the matter is the range of outcomes from Equal Hardman is from, and he's a rookie. I mean, it may not even be the star. It's from relevance to complete irrelevance. So can you get a steal on him? You're probably either getting a steal or wasting a pick. I mean, that's probably what – he's a 10th-round guy, so you can waste it on Miko Hardman, and I probably would tell you to waste it, but that ADP is going to come up if Tyreek Hill is definitively suspended, cut, any of those things. Well, And, and, and how high does it go? If, if Tyreek's gone tomorrow, how high is Miko Hardman being drafted, wide receiver? The question for me is more of uh, Robinson – it, like, because right now Miko is, as he should be, he's the backup. But because we we still haven't had training camp, we haven't had time for preseason for him to establish himself as the actual starter. I know what they gave up to get him, but I, I'm with you that the, the wild card situation of between Demarcus Robinson and Miko Hardman, one of those guys has to, they have to have value. This have is to. this isn't me. A, a, coming in being like, man, I really hope Chris Conley can become something as the wide receiver three on this team. This is literally, you're talking. This was like last year, you're saying? Right. Right. Where you're digging at the bottom of their depth chart. If you, The guy who's at the top of the depth chart, they have to have value. Second round pick. 
a lot of confidence from the team. He has to earn his place. He's a complete wild card to me. And the variables of Sammy Watkins' health, Tyreek Hill's availability, Demarcus Robinson, what does he contribute to the team? I know Chiefs fans, they're okay with him. Assuming, he's not a burner, though. Like, no, that, no, no, no. He's, he's the guy who catches no lookers. Right. Assuming that Tyreek Hill is out, like let's say it comes out right now, Tyreek Hill right. is done. Where would you guys be willing to draft Miko? Because I'm still on the, I'm still on the side of rookie wide receivers don't usually pan out, especially sure. quickly. So I wouldn't this play with them. This is a special man. situation. Oh, man. certainly. If Tyreek is gone, Sammy will go much higher than he's going now, and Miko will go much higher than he's going. Sammy now. would jump into the third round. Sammy would I be bet. a yeah. He'd be a yes, he'd be he a will. third round. Pick. Where's he going right now? Sure, he's a uh, fifth round pick. I'm yeah, telling he would you, he, he would absolutely jump two rounds if, no, in a heartbeat. There, I'm telling you guys the amount of times that I've spoke kindly of Sammy Watkins and had the blowback of a thousand sons. There, <laughs> the league people do not want to put their trust in Sammy Watkins. He will not get up to the third because the other people that are in the third they go no. When I'm comparing, do I want uh, you know me Cole in the seventh or Sammy in the third? Yeah, I'll take me Cole. Yeah, I'll take Sammy in the fourth, which is where he'll end up. Okay, maybe third, fourth round. Fourth round, 100%. All right. Are you disagreeing with that, Jay? No, I think fourth round is where okay. he I'm belongs. just looking at the third round is full of Hilton, Thielen, exactly. AJ the, Green. He's not going to be in that tier. No, he won't. But do I, I, would, do I, would, I get to go now? Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. I, will you give, are you going to give up on Sammy if he doesn't play 16? Never! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Mike, you do get to go now. To be fair for Jason, he never one single day in this office gave up on Eric Ebron. Yeah. Never. Never. Never, Mike. He never did. And now you need to. But didn't he give up on him now? No. I can't convince anybody to give up on Eric Ebron, <laughs> even though it's the right thing to do. Okay, I'm jumping in. I'll start with my player who is ranked highly. I like him. He's my number 13 running back. But he's a wild card to me because there are there there should be concerns, and I don't think that they're that people are actually looking at the concerns. They're looking at what happened last year in his production. That is Cleveland Browns starting running back Nick Chubb. He is going at the back or about the middle of the second round. And here's the problem with Nick Chubb in 2018. No running, running back one caught fewer than 26 passes. The lowest on that list, that was Kareem Hunt. So if Kareem Hunt still managed to be a running back one even though he, he missed a, a lot of the season. The top 10 of last year, they averaged 91 targets. That number has been rising steadily since 2016. So 2016, they averaged targets of a top 10 running back, 62. 2017, it was 76. And it's not to say that it's impossible because in those seasons you had LeGarrette Blunt coming through with his eight targets, but it took freaking 18 touchdowns to get him there. And then and, and Zeke has kind of been the outlier at the position and up until last year where he just grinds his way to being a, a running back one, but that's because he averages like 100 yards a game on the ground. Last year, Nick Chubb was pacing for 45 targets when he took over as the starter. And people people are taking him as the 12th running back off the board. He was on pace for nearly 300 carries, over 1,300 yards. But the targets, is a it's a real problem. It scares me beyond measure. Okay, so you're with me. That you are scared of Nick Oh, Chubb. yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I was, I because was the you champion. Weren't. You were the champion of Chubb. Yeah. <laughs> and... Now, you're sitting here. I've been champs of many things. <laughs> and you're not. That may be my greatest feat. And, and I think it's – but what it shows is it's all about the price. Yes. And, it's not and about absolutely. the player's ability. It's the utilization and the price. It's the margin of error for Nick Chubb, where if you don't get these huge – where he's one of the most elusive running backs. I looked into a pro football focus, graded him out. He was the number one most elusive running back – where by their grade of 103. Number two was Derrick Henry at 89. 80, <laughs> 89. Are you talking about Jeremy Hill? I'm talking about a guy. So his elusive rating was nearly 20 points higher than the second than the second ranked running back. And the, tra the, the team traded Kevin Zeitler 
the number one graded offensive guard last year by Pro Football Focus. They just he's gone now. Like that is also a big deal. Look at look at what happened to the Los Angeles Rams. They made a couple key additions between the Jeff Fisher year and the Sean McVay year, and that turned Todd Ger Todd Gurley into an absolute superstar. I'm just saying I love Nick Chubb. I think he is a sensational running back. But there are absolutely red flags that I think people are just – they're just pushing through them like the, they, they, it ain't no thing. The elusive rating and the huge breakaway runs, those, yes. those are a double-edged sword, right? They are Pat Mahomes' 50 touchdowns. It's awesome. It's like – When you get it. What do you want more than a really elusive back who can have breakaway runs? But – statistically they're anomalous they should come back down to earth when they're set that far apart from what is the norm and so if you don't get those things it's so hard and you don't that have is, the receiving that's it's such a hard line of thinking like when you just if we just talk about that for a minute like it's so i because it happens every year right i mean uh jay ajayi remember he had the insane games against buffalo isaiah crowell had some isaiah crowell's had the breakaway runs and it's like but it just it, it's like uh, next time Nick don't do that just now, don't just just don't do it so that I can be more confident in you in fantasy football. So the, <laughs> Wait, I, I, it's just it's the two players though uh, that come to mind it's that we hard that we've had this argument with. You know, are are the two examples you just gave, and that and they, did come down to earth, right? The JJ and Isaiah Crowell is like well, well, we've had the argument about them, but there have been players like Jamal Charles and Adrian Peterson who you know. Sure. They broke off consistent huge plays year after year after and Jamal, year after but Jamal year. Charles, and Alvin Kamara. Jamal Charles and Alvin Kamara, they have the bedrock of they're going to catch the ball. You're not wrong. So, You're not wrong. Like, even if the breakaway run doesn't come this game, it's okay because I know that this player is going to catch four to five passes a game. Adrian Peterson, he's a completely different animal because he he's a Hall of Fame running back. And People as much as I like Chubb, I'm not going to give him a Hall of Fame status after his rookie year. People expect the Browns to be great. Yes, they do. They expect them to win the division. They expect them to score a ton of points. And they expect the secondaries of opposing teams to be focused on Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. and what Baker's bringing to the team. So the running lanes are going to be clear for a guy who's more elusive than anybody in football, one and against six and seven man fronts. That's why the price is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And you would hope touchdowns could compensate for. Right, anomalous right. big plays. And that's what it, that's what this show is There's all about. The wild he is card. a wild card where he, yes, of course Nick Chubb can outproduce his RB12 eight average draft price. But there is absolutely a world where he underperforms that as well. Well, there's yes. probably nowhere no chance for him to be top 5. Right, if you're I not catching with passes. That. Well, I mean, unless you're somehow turned into Zeke. Zeke is and like, he starts catching the ball. Well, saying Zeke could be a, a running back. Zeke could be a top 3 guy. Before last year, when he was catching all the yeah, passes. look, I, I, I know Chubb is is very good. He's a good running back, but he's not Zeke. I mean, Zeke right. was a top ten NFL well, and draft pick. You're talking about the scheme as well, for, right. yes, for Zeke and the offensive line. So uh, for my next wow card, wow card. Um, look, I'm talking about you just sound like a macaw. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, you, I'm going to talk about a, a little laxative here. Oh, what? Well, the restraints of the beehole have been loosed. Okay. <laughs> there was this not is even, what we're going with? Word assembly wasn't even quite right there. And uh, Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake he has been a, a guy that I have. Are you just trying? Like, you're just poking me with your picks mm, today. Yes. Like, you can get mad at me for, like, opposing you. But you know what's coming when you pick guys that are, like, awesome. <laughs> No, what was the adjective you were using? That right? have, that that are wild cards. Yes, that and, are wild uh, cards. That's the that's what we're talking about today. Is guys that but we I just mean, brought up this guy too. Uh, look, Kenyon Drake. I, I went and I Jason will talk about Kenyon Drake whenever he can. Yeah, Kenny Kenny Drake is just really good. <laughs> Kenny. Now he's Kenny. Yeah. Here's the deal. Over the last two seasons, he has not been allowed to get the ball. From the B-hole, which is why the B-hole moniker was What named. if somebody doesn't know who you're talking about? I'm talking about Adam Gase, <laughs> who was nicknamed the B-hole. He's the head coach formerly of the Miami Dolphins, who refused, refused to give Kenyon Drake the ball, wanted to bring in an old Frank Gore, give him 150-plus touches. 
despite the fact that the year prior in 2017, you had JJ go out and then it took uh, Damian Williams to go down to where it was like, okay, Kenya Drake finally will give you the ball. This is a guy who every time he touched the ball looked electric. His fantasy points per touch are always elite. His yards per carry are near the top of the league for the last three seasons. I mean, he's been great. And then you give him the ball at the end of 2017. He had five games in a row where he had more than 10 carries in a game. I I'm not making this like, he oh, he had 18 carries. He had more than 10 carries in a game for five games in a row. And during that stretch, he was the running back eight in fantasy football. He was dominant for a bad team, right? Like the Dolphins weren't good two years right. ago. The Dolphins weren't good last year. And last year, over the course of the season, there were only five well, games. Weren't they a playoff team two years ago? Were they good, they were. Mike? Yes, they were. Were the Bills good last year? So, what about no? What about the comp to somebody like Lamar Miller, who, for sure. years, efficiency metrics were touted for Lamar Miller until he was given more work and it was all the same fantasy wise because efficiency goes down and that's just inevitable. I mean, generally, the best, most efficient players are the players that touch the ball less frequently. I don't disagree with the fact that, you know, Kenyon Drake is an electric talent. I wonder though if the the league has decided, not just the B hole, that he is not a I mean, he's not the workhorse caliber type of player. Sure. And and that could happen, but the thing that's standing in the way of that happening is the depth chart. You have Kalen Balage and Miles Gaskins. Two extraordinarily unproven players, players that we really haven't even seen in the NFL. So I don't think, you know, it's not like a situation He's certainly where Frank the Moore is there. He's the clear starter as of right now. And in the games over the last two years where he's had just 10 touches, he averages the running back 10 in fantasy football both years for the. I'm not mocking the Dolphins and saying they're bad. I'm just bringing up the counter argument of I don't like to have running backs on bottom half teams no of course you want to running you want Todd Gurley for the Los Angeles Rams but for that team he's still been very good I think he's electric so he's a complete wild card right maybe Caleb what did Balazs you stat comes in. him for attempts wise because in his career oh, I mean he has he has fewer attempts in his career than like a regular workhorse back has in a feel year like that's Jason's point he's 133 120 what did you stat him for this year I would like to just know that for for how you see that opportunity breaking down. Sure. Um, I, ha I have Kenyon Drake statted completely not as a workhorse. 200? 192 rushing oh, okay. attempts. Okay. 77 Where does that put targets. him in your rankings? I believe I've got him 18. Okay. That's all fine. That's all fine. My point I is... I want him. Those numbers that I just gave are conservative. Those are, those are hedged numbers. If he comes out and gets 225 carries, very in the realm of possibility... And 85 targets. You don't think 225 carries? I don't think 225 is in the possibility for Drake. Do you think it is, Mike? No, I also don't think you're being conservative. No, I don't giving him 100 With 192? No. No, because no, he uh, – I don't think so. He's played 16 games, two straight years, 133, 120. That would be As a backup. As, that would be conservative. As a backup. But that's uh, the point is he may be the backup again. Galen yeah. Balazs might be the starting running back. So <laughs> Wild card! <laughs> what? No, no doubt about the wild card. And, like – Jarek McKinnon or, or Kenyon Drake, guys? Who do you want? Oh, Kenyon Drake. Drake. Not close. Get out of yeah. here. Yeah. I'm in the same boat. So yeah. I, I believe Kenyon Drake. 100%. Your most profound argument is the one that you mentioned about 10-plus touches. When he gets 10-plus touches, not just carries, not, it's, it's not dependent on him getting 225. 10-plus touches uh, and being at RB10 is, is powerful. He's used in the passing game. He 73 targets last year, 53 receptions. A depth chart with no competition, and he has shown extreme efficiency. So if the efficiency comes down a little and the volume goes up, I think he's got a realistic outlook where he could be a top 12 back. I'm not sure he's scoring nine touchdowns again, though. Sure. Yeah, he might not. I don't have him statted for nine. Yeah. that. I guess one of those was uh, the great <laughs> The great uh, hook and ladder. Yes. The great yeah, hook the and ladder. The game. And, and on top of that, I mean, you have... He's been great. There's no argument about when he gets the ball, he's been electric. You have the... It, what should be maybe the... I mean, not as a good version, but it's the Patriots offensive system coming down to Miami. And they use their running backs a lot, especially in the passing game. 
All right, the final wild card of this episode. I told you I'm bringing in a, a ranked high name. I'm bringing in a guy who's ranked low. Currently go. Wow. Currently going. I can't the, believe he's going that low. As the wide receiver 50 because people just don't know what to do with him. I agree that it's it's hard wow, God. it's hard to know what to do with with mr deshaun jackson and i want to lay out what oh, happened so last excited year to hear this what what if you don't recall what happened last year deshaun jackson opened the season up absolutely on fire just crushing people's souls you took him as late as could be in the draft you started him and you're just winning weeks because for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Ryan Fitzpatrick was the starting quarterback. Then Jameis Winston came in, and he was just an absolute dark cloud of the Deshaun Jackson parade. Jameis Winston was fine for himself, but it did not work out for Deshaun Jackson. The splits last year for DJX, games where Fitzpatrick played and games where it was just Jameis Winston. You're talking about the targets are nearly the same, 6.1 to 6.5 targets a game. But here's what happened to the production. Four receptions as compared to 2.5, 78 yards compared to 36, a half a touchdown a game compared to nothing. That's nearly 15 PPR points a week with when games where Ryan Fitzpatrick was playing, and that includes some games where Ryan Fitzpatrick was not the starter the entire game. So these numbers are a little skewed. But 15 points down to eight, which tells me this is not a Deshaun Jackson problem. Mm -hmm. He is still a great wide receiver. And if you watch Tampa Bay games, when Jameis Winston was the quarterback, you frequently saw D-Jax running free and, Wide and then an errant ball either way overthrown or way underthrown and an absolute <laughs> furious Deshaun Jackson. Flash forward to this year, the Philadelphia Eagles – traded for him they wanted him to come back home and so much so they said okay here's a new three-year deal to sean jackson worth nearly 30 million dollars but then you get right back into the wild card situation for djx because last year the philadelphia eagles quarterbacks as a whole they were not good with the deep ball carson wentz was only throwing a deep pass which is 20 yards in the air on 11.2 percent of his attempts that's not great when you're considering Ryan Fitzpatrick is up at 12.6. Then Carson Wentz passer rating on those deep balls, only 70 compared to Ryan Fitzpatrick, who has a, who had a deep passing percentage of or, or passer rating of over 107. So it's like, okay, well, if I'm just looking at last year's stats, if the Carson Wentz is throwing the deep ball, his numbers were very similar to Jameis Winston as far as efficiency. So maybe nothing's going to change. But now I go back to when Carson Wentz was having his MVP level season and he was absolutely sensational. He's throwing the ball deep 16.5% of the time, had a pass rating of over 100. So the outcomes for Deshaun Jackson are so wide. It, it, I mean, wide receiver 50, Deshaun Jackson literally can be a league winning type of receiver if he hits if Carson Wentz comes back and he like for you Andy if if Carson Wentz is who you expect him to be then Deshaun Jackson is is paying back a just insane dividends on a wide receiver 50 price well some some of the stats that you're talking about Carson Wentz not being quite as efficient as he was the year before on the deep balls getting out of the pocket getting out of the pocket is one thing and also who, the weapons he didn't sure. have a Deshaun Jackson like Maybe having Deshaun Jackson there to throw a deep ball to Which might help. Certainly. Like the year before, he had at least Torrey Smith, who we can mock Torrey Smith, but he's that, that's his He'll, trick. That's his job, yeah. He's a deep ball guy. <laughs> that's his trick. Last year, you know, they were <laughs> And play now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I, will, Torrey Smith. Torrey Smith. I will run the nine routes. Yeah. You know, last year they basically replaced Torrey Smith with eventually Golden Tate, which well, was the exact opposite trick. It was supposed to be Wallace, Mike Wallace, but then he got hurt. Right. No, I, those are both good points. I mean, I think if it, we saw Wentz in his MVP-esque season get out of the pocket by time, deep plays developed, that's what you need in today's NFL. That's what Mahomes did so well, you know, buying time, giving d a chance to run free, and just having that connection between players. I mean, we haven't seen it yet, but Winston, d they didn't have it. It wasn't right. there. Never. It, they the never math had it. never added up. So uh, he's – 
so interesting because when I look at my team and I'm making dynasty moves, I've got Deshaun Jackson, right? And I don't want to trade him for anything. I, I want to open the – I just want to see what I get under the tree. Right. I don't know what it's going to be. And I could be disappointed I didn't trade him for better value, but maybe he's a top 15 guy somehow. Yeah, and both Andy and I have Deshaun Jackson currently ranked as a top 40 guy. So even with not being exactly sure what's going to happen with Deshaun Jackson this year, he's still already an immediate value Yeah, because he's me. wide receiver – 50, yeah. being drafted as wide receiver 50. I'm sure if you're playing on draft right now, you're playing best ball, he's, going, he's definitely going before wide receiver 50. But for people who are doing the casual redraft mock drafts right now. Now, do you worry at all about having – I mean, you, if you draft Deshaun Jackson in a redraft league, you're dealing with the boom bust. Sure. Do I even start him? You, could, you absolutely could be dealing with that. But with Carson, Carson Wentz, there's a world where that's – you're not dealing with a boom bust. You're just dealing with a great player who's good and then can boom. I'm excited to see what happens in Philadelphia this year. Yeah, I am too. I, th I think DJX is great for Philadelphia. I think DJX is great for Carson Wentz. I don't know because there are so many mouths to feed. I mean, this is why he's a wild card. I don't, I don't know that Deshaun Jackson is going to be a reliable – and the wide receivers, though. he's the two, right? Well, the nice thing is that Deshaun Jackson has a huge mouth. So when he actually takes a bite, he, he half your cake has already been eaten. Yeah, that's true. Because I kind of surprised you went to that specific <laughs> well, we're analogy. About mouths to but, feed. but one bite is all he needs per game. Yeah. And and what I liked about your story because people have moved on from him, but you began your narrative on him by just saying what he was last year. This was last year. Yes. This wasn't three years ago, Deshaun Jackson. He came out and was dominating for fantasy football last season with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, and Carson Wentz, I mean, we're, we're joking about Torrey Smith. Carson Wentz has never had a player like Deshaun Jackson, and that's how I open with this is not a Deshaun Jackson problem. I think he is still a top, so do they. A top they field stretcher. It. Yeah, yes. they believe it with the contract. All right, uh, let's move on. Pristine. All right, today's pristine deal of the day. A Derrick Henry signed Tennessee Titans jersey, $71. Yesterday on pristineauction.com, sign up. Use the registration code BALLERS. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. If you use the code BALLERS, they give you 5 bucks towards your first memorabilia purchase. Mm -hmm. And I heard that with every Derrick Henry jersey, signed jersey from Pristine Auction, comes with a handwritten note from Matt LaFleur saying I'm so sorry that it took me until week 13 to give him An the apology. ball. Yeah. yeah. It might or might not. Yes. <laughs> it might or might not. That is it for today's episode of the show. A reminder, as we close out, head to footclangiveaway.com Enter to win some of that sweet swag and some tickets. That's right. See you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.